Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss K-Modoid clustering algorithm with a simple numerical example. Before we proceed with K-Modoid clustering algorithm, first we will try to understand the difference between K-Modoid and K-Means clustering algorithm. Partitioning around medoids or K-Modoid algorithm is a partitional clustering algorithm which is slightly modified from the K-Means algorithm. In K-Means algorithm, whenever we create the clusters, we calculate the means of the data points in the cluster that will be considered as the centroid. But in k medoids algorithm, the data points are chosen to be the medoids over here. I have already discussed the k-means clustering algorithm. I have already solved many examples on the top of k-means clustering algorithm. The link for those videos is given in the description below. Do follow those videos to understand the k-means clustering algorithm. Now we will try to discuss the k medoid clustering algorithm. The first step in k medoid clustering algorithm is to select k random points as the medoids from the given n data points from the data set. Let us assume that we have been given n data points. From these particular n data points, we need to select k random points as the medoids here. Here k is the number of clusters to be formed. Let us say that we have been given 10 data points. I have drawn it over here. From this particular 10 data points, we need to select k data points randomly they will be considered as the initial medoids here. So let us say that I want to create two clusters. In this case, the value of k will be equal to 2. So I need to select two random data points and I need to say those particular things as medoids here. So I have selected one data point as the medoid here and this is the second data point which is selected as a medoid in this case. Now once you select two random data points as the medoids, next we need to associate each of the data points from the given data set to the closest medoid here. Now, how can we do this particular thing? First, we need to calculate the distance between the each data point to the medoid and the one which is nearest to those particular medoid, we need to assign the data points here. Now, the next question comes in front of us is how to calculate the distance between a data point and the medoid here. That can be done with uh, uh, the different uh, distance metrics like uh, Euclidean distance, Manhattan distance or cosine similarity and so on. So you can use any of those particular distance metrics and then calculate the distance. Based on the distance, you can assign the data point to the closest medoid in this case. So I have done that particular thing over here. First, I need to calculate the distance from each of these particular data points to these particular medoids. Based on this particular distance, I have to create the clusters here. I have created the two clusters. You can see here in the first cluster, we have four data points. In the second cluster, we have six data points over here. Once you form these particular clusters, the next step is to calculate the total cost of forming these clusters. So in this case, we have created two clusters. The total cost is always equal to summation of CI. Summation of PI belongs to CI, cardinality of PI minus CI here. Where CI is the cluster number, PI is the data point within that particular cluster. So for each of those particular clusters, from the given data point, we need to calculate this particular difference that is cardinality of PI minus CI. Once you do that particular thing, you will get the total cost of forming those particular clusters. Now, in this case, uh, we got the total cost is equal to 20. Now, uh, this particular numerical example is already discussed. The link for that video is given in the description below. Do follow that particular video to understand the exact calculation of this particular total cost and so on. So, in this case, I have written the total cost is equal to 20 for forming these particular two clusters here. Now, once you calculate these particular two clusters, the next step is to identify one non-medoid point and select it as a new medoid in this case. So once you select that particular non-medoid point as the new medoid, we need to swap that particular medoid point with the existing medoid point over here. So that is nothing but, in this case, we have already selected these two data points as the medoid points. From the existing non-medoid points, we will select one data point as the medoid point over here. So in this case, I have selected this data point as the medoid point. Once you select this particular point as the medoid point, we need to replace or we need to swap this particular medoid point with the existing medoid point. So either I need to replace this particular medoid point with this one or I need to replace this with this one. So one of these particular combination we have to form here. Again, that will be done randomly. So in this case, I have replaced this particular medoid point with this one. 
Now, once I do that particular thing, we got this as the first medoid point and this as the second medoid point over here. Now, once you get these uh, two new medoid points, again, the same thing we have to do. First, we need to calculate the distance from this particular medoid point with respect to each of these particular data points. The same thing has to be done with respect to this medoid point. That is nothing but we need to calculate the distance from this medoid point to each of these particular data points. Based on that particular distance, we need to form the clusters here. So again, we will get one cluster with respect to this medoid, one cluster with respect to this medoid over here. So once you calculate those two clusters, again, we need to calculate the total cost of forming these particular clusters here. Again, the same equation we need to use. That is nothing but uh, C is equal to summation of CI, summation of PI belongs to CI, cardinality of PI minus CI here, CI is the cluster and PI is the point within that particular cluster. So we need to recalculate that particular cost with the new medoid in this case. So once you calculate that particular cost, we will get 26 in this case. So this is the total cost of forming the clusters with new medoid point here. Now we need to compare this particular total cost with the previous total cost. The previous total cost was 20 and the new total cost is equal to 26. New total cost is more compared to the previous or the initial uh, total cost here. The meaning of this one is swapping a medoid point with a new medoid point is not a good option in this case because once I swap the existing medoid point with the new medoid point, the total cost is increasing here. If it is decreasing, again, we need to repeat this particular steps again and again because the total cost is increasing compared to the old total cost we should not replace the existing medoid point with a new medoid point over here. These two medoid points are perfect in this particular case over here. So this is how the simple k medoid clustering algorithm works. Now we will discuss uh, the advantages and disadvantages of uh, k medoid clustering algorithm. The advantages of k medoid clustering algorithm is it is a simple algorithm to form the clusters for the given data set and it is easy to implement. K medoid algorithm is fast and converges in a fixed number of steps compared to K means uh, clustering algorithm. K medoid is less sensitive to outliers, that is, if you have outliers in the given data set, K medoid clustering algorithm works perfectly on that particular data set. The disadvantages of K medoid clustering algorithm are the main disadvantage of K medoid algorithm is it is not suitable for clustering problems where we have non-spherical clusters. The second one is uh, it may obtain different results for different runs because we are selecting these particular k medoids that's the initial k medoids randomly in this case. Because we are selecting medoid points randomly at the initial stage, if you run the algorithm again and again, you may get some different results over here. So in this video, I have discussed what is k medoid clustering algorithm, how it works, what are the advantages and disadvantages of k medoid clustering algorithm? I hope the concept is clear. If you like the video, do like and share with your friends. Press the subscribe button for more videos. Press the bell icon for regular updates. Thank you for watching.